Hello, welcome to the part 2 of Network Devices. In this lesson, we will look at what routers are and how they work. If you haven't watched the part 1, it is highly recommended that you watch it before you continue with this one. To begin, let's quickly do a recap on the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we spoke about the meaning of computer networking and network switches. We learned that, computer networking means interconnecting computers or computing devices to share data and resources with each other. And the device that makes this possible in a local network is the network switch. We also learned the various types of switches available. We again talked about some factors you should consider when purchasing a network switch. Please check on the previous video before continuing. The link is in the description below. To begin with today's lesson, let quickly look at these important networking terms as I will be using them mostly from now onwards. 1. A packet. A packet is a basic unit of data that's grouped together and transferred over a computer network. For example, when you intend to send an information from one computer to the other, the information is grouped into data packet and these packets are sent in segments. These packets are then grouped at the receiving end when the data reaches its destination for the information to be completed. We will talk more on this topic in later videos, but for now, understand packets to be group of bits or units of data. 2. Host a network host is a computer or other device connected to a computer network. A host may work as a server offering information resources, services, and applications to users or other hosts on the network. For example, in this illustration, this computer is a host, same as this one, as they both send information to each other and are also assigned a network address. 3. Server a server is a type of host that offers resources or services to the other hosts. A real-world example is when you use your laptop, phone, or any other device to access information on the internet, say google.com. That means you are accessing information from a type of server called a web server. In this case your laptop or the phone you are using becomes the client. We shall delve deep into servers as we progress in this course. 4. IP Address IP stands for Internet Protocol. An IP address is a numerical label assigned to each device connected to a computer network. For example, in this simple network each host is assigned an IP address. Don't worry, we shall extensively look at what an IP address is, the type of IP addresses we have and how to assign IP addresses in subsequent videos as we progress in this course, but for now. This is how a typical IP address looks like. An IP address consists of two components, a network ID and a host ID. A network ID or address identifies the specific network to which a host is attached. A host ID or address uniquely identifies a host within a network. For example, in this illustration, we have two separate networks. Each of these networks has a unique network ID. For this network group, this is the ID. And for this group, here is the network ID which is totally different from that of group 1. Talking of host ID, in this group, each and every host is uniquely identified by an ID. Same as in this group. Another term we shall come across in this course is a subnet mask. A subnet mask is used to group large networks into smaller subnetworks. We shall look at this topic in a more extensive manner in later videos as we progress in this course. Please take note of these terminologies as we will be using them mostly from now onward. Now, to connect these two networks we will need a device called a router. A router is a device that connects two or more packet switch networks. A router moves data packet between two or more networks. This router will be responsible to move a data packets between these two different networks. To be able to do this successfully, the router is assigned different sets of IP addresses from both sides. We shall call these sides in this course by the name left and right sides. 
We need to provide IP address for both interfaces. Inside this router is a map of all the networks this router knows about. We call this a routing table. Inside this routing table is what is called routes. In each route is instructions on how to reach each network this router knows about. Based on these IP addresses, the router will keep a routing table correlating to these networks. The first route will tell this router that, to send any packet concerning this network ID, then use your left interface. The second route will also tell the router that, to forward any packet concerning this network ID, then use your right interface. Let quickly look at ways the routing table is populated for routers to find their routes. 1. Directly connected routes. This is a route of networks directly connected to the router. For example, in this case, this router is directly connected to these two networks. Therefore, has two directly connected routes in the routing table. As already said, this route tells the router that, the 192.168.123.x network exists at the left interface. And this route also tells the router that, the 192.168.111.x network also exists at the right interface. Now, to explain the next way routing table is populated, let's add another network. To connect these networks together, we use another router. Now, same way we configured our router 1 we have to as well configure the router 2 with two IP address spaces, left interface and right interface. Don't forget a router must have at least two sets of IP addresses. By so doing, we will then have another routing table keeping routes of all the networks router 2 knows about. This one indicates a route for the right interface, and this one also indicates a route for the left interface. Now, if this host intends to send a packet with destination IP of 192.168.123.133, router 2 will forward the packet to this host via its right interface. But what happens if this host F intend to send a packet to this host B with destination IP 192.168.111.213? What happens then? Now, since router 2 is not configured with this route, it does not know this destination host with IP 192.168.111.213 and cannot use the directly connected method. So this means that router 2 is going to drop this packet. Now, to make this possible, we can use static routes. Static route means that we have to manually configure router 2 and add IP address space for network 1. This will tell the router that, anytime it wants to reach any host within network 1 IP address space, it should forward the packets to router 1. In this case, if host F intends to send this packet to host B, this router 2 will look at the destination IP address and now know the route in its routing table. So it will forward the packet to router 1. Then router 1 will also look at its routing table and know that the destination host is on its right interface and sends the packet to host B. But what then happens if host B wants to send a reply back to host F? That means router 1 will drop the packet because, in its routing table, it does not know the routes to get to this destination IP address or network. Therefore, we need to statically set the routes for the network 192.168.122.x. By so doing, router 1 will forward the packet to router 2 and router 2 will know that the destination host exists at its left interface then also forward the packet to host F. Please note that today our main focus is on routers and routing table but not switches. So I have not spoken about routers looking at MAC addresses of its interface and host interface MAC addresses before forwarding packets. We shall look at that extensively when we get to packet tracing and advanced routing as we progress in this course. 3. Another method for router to determine its routes is, by dynamic routes. 
Dynamic routes is when the router automatically learn from each other about the networks they are connected to. For example, we can configure both routers to learn from each other about the networks they know. In this case, if router 1 receives a packet it does not know the destination IP address or host, it will forward that packet automatically to the next router which is router 2. This method is made possible by the help of protocols called dynamic routing protocols. Let now look at some types of routers. 1. Wired Router Wired routers share data over cables and create wired local area networks LANs. In this illustration, we can create a LAN network by connecting a router through a cable medium. And this router could be connected to the internet through an ISP that is, an internet service provider. 2. Wireless Router Wireless routers use antennas to share data and create wireless local area networks LANs or wireless LANs. To connect to this router your computer or host machines must have a wireless network card. In other words these routers provide access to wireless fidelity what we usually call a Wi-Fi. Mostly such routers are used in small home office networks. We may not have to do any extra configurations on this router because such configuration mostly already done by your ISP. Also you may not necessarily configure IP addresses for this network because this routers automatically assign IP addresses dynamically by DHCP. DHCP stand for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. We shall look at it later in this course. 3. Edge Routers This can either be a wired or wireless router that distributes data packets between networks but not within a network. As their name indicates, edge routers are placed at the edge or boundary of networks and typically connect to internet service providers. 4. Core Routers A core router is a router designed to operate in the internet backbone. In this illustration, this is a core router. They're designed to become the backbone of your network and do the heavy lifting of data transfer. 5. Virtual Routers these routers are pieces of software that allow computers and servers to operate like routers. They'll share data packets just as physical routers do. Now, before you purchase a router, whether an enterprise class or consumer class, you must consider the following features. 1. Wi-Fi or wireless access. Depending on the host devices that are available on your network, this must be considered for easy access if your host a mostly mobile devices. 2. The frequency band. Wireless routers usually operates on one of two frequency bands that is 2.4 GHz and or 5 GHz. The 2.4 GHz band gives wide range of coverage but transmit data at low speeds and can become crowded very quickly. However, the 5 GHz band routers give short range of coverage but has high bandwidth compared to the 2.4 GHz routers. Now, some host or devices may not support one of these bands, so it is recommended that you consider a router that is a dual band and other to benefit from both frequency bands where necessary. 3. Guest Wi-Fi Access Some routers gives you the ability to make special network settings for your guest in other to give them a restricted access for security reasons. Guest devices are those that are not part of your core network but do connect to your network occasionally. Example, when you visit a hotel, a restaurant, or other public places, you usually get guest access to their network. 4. Virtual LANs and multiple SSID You must also consider if the router can provide multiple SSID as well as virtual LAN capability. SSID stands for Service Set Identifier. This is set of characters that uniquely names a wireless network. It can also be referred to as network name. For example, when you scan for available Wi-Fi on your phone, what you see are the SSID. 5. VPN Server and Client Access. Some routers give you access to securely connect to your home or office network to access your data from a remote areas as if you were physically present and connected to your network.
That is the work of a VPN server. 6. Dual or Backup WAN Port Consider if the router can give you another internet connection for backup or load balancing. Some routers support the access to connect two cables or DSL lines from different service providers. 7. Check if the router supports RADIUS service. RADIUS means remote authentication dial in user service. This allows for independent authentications so that you can assign each user a unique username and password and then change or revoke access in the event a user leaves or loses their Wi-Fi device. I hope you have understood how routers work. We shall learn more in the advanced level. Kindly share this video to encourage us to invest time to do more. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel in other not to miss any lesson. See you in the next lesson.